Last summer in Rio, one generation of USA gymnasts became the final act of a legacy. We are the final five! In a performance worthy of a grand finale. Now the torch has been passed to a new leader, new stars, and new names on the road to Tokyo in the Olympic Games in 2020. The Olympic Channel, home of Team USA, presents the 2017 U.S. Classic. Four years ago, three young women took the floor of this same event. Lori and Madison and Simone would use the U.S. Classic as a starting point to launch their Olympic careers. Now we return to the suburbs of Chicago and the Sears Center to begin the hunt for the next crop of American Olympic gymnasts. The athletes are on the floor. You are looking live, and we're going to start tonight's event the way all these events start, with the U.S. National Anthem. At this time, we ask you to all please rise and remove your hats. Here to perform our National Anthem from Madison, Wisconsin, Elizabeth and Shane McGargle. start warming up and among those athletes is Reagan Smith. She was an alternate for the Rio Games and now at 16 years of age, believe it or not, she's considered a veteran of this program and a leader of the team. Also joining her, another veteran, Ashton Lockner, was also a reserve for the 2016 Games. She is an uneven bar specialist and she is here in Chicago also competing, hoping to keep her Olympic dreams alive. But many other women are here ready to make a name for themselves and prove they are ready for the limelight of leading Team USA. Hello everyone, I'm John Roethlisberger, once again joined by Olympic champions Tim Daggett and Nastia Lukin, and we are here at the Sears Center again, a, a frequent stop for the U.S. Classic, and it's, it's 2017, Tim, and it seems like yesterday we we're at the Rio Olympic Games, but in the sports world, it's ancient history, and I think for a couple of these athletes competing tonight, they would much rather look forward at what's coming than look back at 2016. Well, absolutely, and as you mentioned, two of them were Olympic reserves, Ashton Locklear and Reagan Smith. They were so close to being a part of that Olympic team, that dream team that went on to win all of those gold medals in Rio, and I'll tell you what, they are looking for it, and they're looking for gold themselves. Well, Reagan Smith and Ashton Locklear are back as seniors, but Nastia, there's a huge crop of these athletes who, over the the last few years were the top juniors. 
but now they get their shot at being a senior. Who are some of these that we should look for? Well, they absolutely do. I think as exciting as Rio was, these new girls out here are going to be just as exciting, and everyone's going to get to know them. Somebody that really stands out to me, Morgan Hurd. This is her first year as a senior, so we're going to see a whole new side of her. Of course, we've seen her a few years ago as a junior, but she is one of the really promising talents as we look ahead towards Tokyo in 2020. Well, it's the first step in a long journey, but these performances tonight matter. These athletes will continue this road to nationals later this summer and for a few to the world championships this fall. We'll kick it off next at the 2017 U.S. Classic. The 2017 U.S. Classic is brought to you by USA Gymnastics. The gymnasts are finishing their one-touch warm-up before they begin their first rotation. And our first athlete up is going to be Abigail Walker. She is from Texas Dreams. Coach, you guys know well, a, a familiar face in the world of gymnastics. Kim Zamesko, one of the absolute all-time best, a world champion in the all-around, and, and just one of the nicest people that you could ever meet. Really has a calm and cool side of her when she's coaching her athletes, and it shows. And not only was she obviously a very successful gymnast, but as you just saw, she was Reagan Smith's coach as well. So she's been through that Olympic cycle and now, of course, has a new crop of girls here at the Classic. And four of them, actually, which is amazing. And yes, you're looking at that right. She is not a giant, that's no. for sure. <laughs> Kim was always the smallest gymnast and she said that she was so excited when Reagan came along because she was actually taller than her and then she got this one right here who is even more petite. There's Reagan Smith and we will see her in the second rotation. She will not be doing vault here in the first rotation. Abigail was fun to watch in, in the warm-ups just working out over the last day or so. You can tell she just has that that kind of panache, a little bit like Kim used to have, and a little bit, honestly, like Reagan Smith has as well. Yeah, she looks really totally unaffected by any of the pressure uh, being on the big stage. You see that she's 15 years old right now. The way it works for international competition to compete as a senior, you have to be 16 in the year of the championships. So she'll turn 16 a little bit later and is eligible to qualify for that world championship team where they'll take four U.S. female athletes, six on the men's side, to Montreal in October. And of course, the world championships after the Olympic Games, there won't be a team competition, so you know, you're really focused on those, the all around and the event finals. And this is amazing. She's gonna do a double twisting, laid out Yurchenko, and for someone so tiny, one of the, the biggest obstacles is to be able to compress the vaulting board enough. They're right in front of us here. Compress the board enough so she can generate enough power. This is not an easy feat to accomplish, I can tell you. And this might be the most nerve-wracking part <laughs> of competing, the, the waiting for the green flag to yeah. come up from the judge. Yeah, and we're, I'm looking right now, there is a red light they are actually moving towards the international standard, and the green light has just illuminated. So she'll do a half turn onto the board and then fly with two twists and a one and a half. Oh, actually only doing a full today. Now, was that a change, do you think, mid-vault, or do you think that was the plan? You know what, it's funny, because as I was saying it, I looked over and I saw Kim, and she kind of gave me, gave me a look, so... Um, I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty sure that I saw her training a double twist during a podium training. But you know, this U.S. Classic competition, it really is the, the, the opening to the season. In a few weeks, we'll have the PNG Championships, and that's where they'll really want to do all of their difficulty. Quickly over to somebody we handicapped as maybe one of the all-around favorites today, Abby Paulson out of Coon Rapids, Minnesota, and Twin City Twisters Gymnastics.
From the same judge as Maggie Nichols, who devastatingly had an injury in the Olympic year, was one of the stars in 2015, the Worlds before it, did not heal enough to get it done for Rio, but. Quick, quickly over to the uneven bars. This is Miley O'Keefe, and, and I want you guys to explain this to our viewers, because this session of the US Classic is a senior session. However, we do have a few juniors in this session, Nastia. Talk about why. Well, absolutely. The, you know, Valeri Lucan, who is now the head coach in the selection committee, they selected some juniors to compete in the senior competition. So they were chosen. And they're chosen because they're some of the top juniors. As you can see right here, just gorgeous lines. Big release done in combination. Oh, boy. That is a major mistake. Was supposed to travel over the bar like she just did there. But I'll tell you, she really has a gorgeous look about her. That's a shame. It really is, and especially on that skill, because it's such an uncharacteristic mistake. It's probably one of the most simple skills in her entire routine. So what she's trying to do here, she's doing a kip and then swinging to a handstand. She's supposed to have her body go completely mm. over the bar and just doesn't quite drive her heels enough. That one, easy. She is, I'm sure, very disappointed in herself because this is probably one of the easiest elements in the routine. But you know, sometimes it's really about getting yourself back to where you need to be, and she did just that on the dismount. And, and as we said, for these juniors, it really is a lot about getting out here on that podium, the experience, because she still is a junior. She won't be able to make that world championship team this year, but looking forward to doing that next year. And there is the, the new U.S. Women's National Team coordinator, your dad, Nastia <laughs> Valeri Lucan, one of my idols back in the day. <laughs> Mine too. And uh, he is just, he's just taking the program right uh, where they left off. And, and Taking the reins from Marta Caroli, who was the longtime national coordinator. He's got big shoes to fill, but he can certainly handle it. That's for sure. And this is another one of these uh, outstanding junior athletes Nastia talked about, Sunisa Lee, out of Midwest Gymnastics, also a club. Um, coming up the ranks in, in the state of Minnesota as well. And, and she is just fantastic on this event. Really just, it comes at you and it just doesn't stop. A lot of releases done in combination, really big too. Coached by Jess Graba and Allie Lim up at Midwest Gymnastics. And we did say, you know, she's a junior this year, but not only is she still a junior this year, she'll be a junior again next year. Miley O'Keefe, sorry. Miley O'Keefe, by the way, 13.75 for that bar routine. Yeah, she probably lost at least, I would say, eight tenths for that error. That would have been a good score. And for the folks in the audience that are accustomed to seeing high scores in this quad after Rio, basically every routine that you're seeing is going to score five tenths lower then in the last quad, they did something very technical. They got rid of one of the requirement groups. So, but what that means is the scores will be lower. After a short judge's hold, we're ready to go. Watch right from the top, as soon as she gets onto the bar, the first release move that she does. Check this out. Huge air. Very nicely done, and it keeps going, like I said, one more here. Great work. Good handstand position. Ooh, that was fingertips. A little low on that oh handstand, boy. and you see she couldn't quite connect to this next skill. And not disastrous, but not good. Kind of a veteran cover up, though. You went over and then managed to keep it moving. So as we said from the top, she had some huge skills. Right here, look how high she gets Gorgeous. up in the air and immediately goes down to the low bar, a pack salto, and right back up here to the high bar. 
What makes it so difficult is not only does she do the difficult skills, but she connects them all in a row. So maybe not the exact start Sinisa wanted. And you can see Coach Jess Graba giving her some comments as we go quickly over to the vault. And back to the seniors in this competition. And this is somebody that kind of caught our eye in the now workouts, Jade Carey out of Phoenix, Arizona in Oasis Gymnastics. She's a big vaulter. She is so powerful, both here and on floor. If she can make her way onto that world team, she could come, come home with a gold medal. Wow. <laughs> that, is, that is very impressive, I'll tell you. And you know, she was just a level 10 gymnast and some of the national staff spotted her during her level 10 season and invited her to the national team training camp, and here she is. A typical style vault, this is called a Kasamatsu. Didn't do that round off onto the board. It's actually much more difficult to generate the power for a vault like that. And what's so critical, she's gonna do another ball right now. And at the Worlds or an Olympic Games, if you want to win an individual medal, you have to be able to do two completely different vaults. So the first one was done without that round off onto the board. This one will show that round off onto the board and she'll do the same vault that Simone Biles won gold on in Rio. It's called an Aminar, a Yurchenko with two and a half twists. So she can just do these two vaults here at the PNG Championships. I mean, she has a very strong chance to make that world team. Our first vaulter of the night, Abby Walker, by the way, got a 13.1. Just got to deal with the landing. She was so powerful in training. Nicely done. Just a little bit of a shimmy to the side on the landing. Didn't quite get that height that we saw earlier uh, this week in the training. But you know, sometimes when you're competing that vault and you know, probably one of the first times you get a little nervous and don't quite do it as well. But these two vaults that she just did here would have been very at home in the Olympic final in Rio, without a doubt. Two and a half twists. So again, it looked like she got it all the way around, but right here just doesn't quite get up as high. Just didn't quite have that rotation. Cleaning up some scores, Abby Walker, first rotation, actually a 12.9. Abby Paulson on floor, 13.25, and you can see Miley O'Keefe's bar routine, a 13.75 with that, with that error. Going back over to the uneven bars, we have another junior, Olivia Dunn, only 14 years old out of Hilldale, New Jersey. Now on uneven bars, we're and you know, it's really a tremendous advantage that Team USA has uh, all around the world when you go to a Worlds or an Olympics, it's competed on a podium, but very few gymnasts, junior gymnasts, have the opportunity to not only compete, but train and get comfortable on this raised surface. It, can really make events like the uneven bars feel very different. Very popular combination that's kind of coming in vogue. Little low on that handstand. Full twisting double, a, a nice exercise, but as you said, Nastia, that one pirouette towards the end of the routine, that was on the verge of being a half a point deduction. It seems like the juniors so far that we've seen, they've got some of the skills, they've got those dynamic moves. It's just a little bit of the refinement, maybe, Nastia, that comes with age. Absolutely, and that's actually their plan. They want to get out here and do all these skills right now, so next year they're for a little bit more comfortable, more consistent as they move on to the senior rankings. But despite that low handstand, beautiful. It's called a Tekachev, down to the low bar, a pack salto. Great combination. And then here she goes all the way back up. At the end of the routine though, she was doing such a nice job. Look at where she finishes. That hand goes down right there. And that was, as I said, precariously close to a 5 tenth deduction. Nice dismount, just a little small step. So 
Livia Dunn waiting for her score. We're going to stay over here on the uneven bars as Riley McCusker prepares to go. We saw her coach Maggie Haney, and here's the score, a 13.05. So the judges definitely uh, saw the deductions you guys saw, almost two and a half points off for that routine. She's not, uh, she's undaunted, smile on her face. She's ready to go to the next event. Yeah, is exactly how she should be at this age, certainly. We see her coach Maggie Haney walking across the mat there. We got, got to know her over the last few years as she coached Lori Hernandez to Olympic gold in Rio. And now she's got another young budding star in Riley McCusker. And I asked uh, Maggie right before the meet began, so is she ready? And she goes, absolutely not. <laughs> and uh, she has been beat up, was in a cast on her wrist, and also on crutches at the same time just weeks ago. You know, and for Riley, it really isn't about getting the highest scores or placing. Oh, oh boy. She really struggled on that in training. Going to do a similar skill right here. That one done very nicely. As I was saying, it's really about getting back out in front of the judges on a podium, on a competition again, and getting ready for later on in the season. This is a great dismount. Check this out from a L grip. Nicely done. Great recovery. She worked hard in that routine. Yeah. You know, not anything near what she wants to be able to do, but. You know what really stuck out to me is her toe point. If oh. anybody has better toe point, I haven't seen it. That was striking. So the release skills in the beginning off the top, very nice. Right here you see a nice release, but this she had struggled on in training. Watch, she's supposed to keep her legs together and straight. She just didn't quite get the rotation that you need for this skill. Just way too close, and it was actually very smart that That's she did that. That's an amazing recovery. I was going to say it. That was uh, phenomenal. But Stay I love the, the dismount from an L grip, like I said. It's kind of a half in, back out. So she's smiling. Another routine in front of the judges, in front of the big lights on the podium, and uh, it'll serve her well as she heads down to the national championships later this summer. And just to talk about what these arrows mean when you see the scores come up, if, if there are deductions of 1.3 or less, they get a green triangle, yellow 1.4 to 1.9, and then see the red triangle, that's not good. That means they've had more than two points deductions. Jordan Childs getting ready to go. Another one of those gymnast nasty you talked about before the meet is very good chance to come away with the U.S. Classic All-Around title. Yeah, she had a great few seasons as a junior and then um, had a few injuries, and so now she's finally a senior gymnast hoping to make that world team. And really, she shines on the power events. She's unbelievable on vaulting, tremendous on floor exercise, a good beamer. She's not bad on uneven bars. Needs to maybe upgrade her difficulty a little bit. You know, and this is one of the painful parts of being a gymnast is when the routine before you goes to a judges conference, um, you have to stand there and wait. And do you guys think it's that release that she tucked her knees in? They're trying to figure out what that might be worth? Yeah, I don't think it's worth anything, to be perfectly honest. I, um, and, you know, it's not only may she not get any credit for it, but she also will incur deductions on it as well. But she really is a phenomenal talent and has, as you said, John, just a body and a line that uh, is, is spectacular. And, uh, you know, she struggled at the American Cup this year, had a lot of issues, and then went to, uh, to Italy and actually won the competition, a major event that Team USA goes to every year. And uh, going from really having a rough time to winning that, I'm sure, did a lot for her confidence. As Jordan waits, you know, it's, I always say, as, as physically demanding as a sport of gymnastics is, sometimes it's even more mentally challenging and demanding. And this is what, you know, this one of these moments is, is trying to test that patience and those nerves. We saw the 13.45 and the red triangle for Riley McCusker. Just too many mistakes in that routine. And here we go. 16-year-old Jordan Childs.
Nice release, transition from low to high, and there is a short handstand again. A lot of gymnasts are doing that front flip now with their legs together in the past. Most people did it with legs apart. It's worth more now to do it with your legs together. Great fight on that handstand. You know, it might be her weakest event, Tim, but that was definitely a great, great bar routine for Jordan. Yeah, she, she is a tough kid without any question and so just heavy. on every event, really, can, can bring in those huge starting scores. Nice releases are critical in a routine. And as we say over and over again, you, you connect a lot of these. Watch this, she's gonna do this front flip with her legs together. As I said in the past, almost everybody did it straddled. Another nice release and transition to the low bar. Of course, she ends here with the dismount. Looking for the ground, full twisting double back. Would you call that a stick? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot as close Tim. as you can get. <laughs> Tim's got it. Tim's standards are too high. <laughs> I'd give it to him. Just that one <laughs> handstand in the routine, but besides that, that was uh, a really great exercise for Jordan. So Jordan says that uh, her favorite subject, she just puts down, I am good at math. So we'll see if the, <laughs> let's see if the judges are a little better at math here and get this score out quickly for young Jordan Childs. Yeah, this is this is slow. I'll tell you what. This is this is something that the FIG has worked on, the governing body of sport worldwide, to try to get the speed of the scoring um, to make it faster, and it's it's very needed in the sport of gymnastics. And it typically is on the uneven bar, so that's not really a, a surprise to me. All the other events, as we're looking around the arena, all the other events are finished. This and here is the score. We get a yellow, a 13.6, just under two points in deduction. So not a bad job for the young Jordan Childs as we see Margzetta Fraser, 17 years old, out of Ariel, New Jersey, and Parquette's National Gymnastics Training Center, a gym that's, uh, the name has been prominent for a long, long time. Decades, many, many decades, actually. Bill and Donna Strauss are the owners and the originators of Parquette's. They've had Olympians, world team members, national champions. She actually is a little bit dinged up at the last competition. She hurt her knee on a landing, but they wanted her to come here, show a bar routine. Good handstands. Great release from oh. oh, wow. That was a great save, though. Yeah. Totally missed her hand. Yeah, that's amazing. Just an exhausting bar routine. Element after element. Beautiful double layout. Great landing. Well, good for her. So, wow, that was amazing. She in combination, traveling from the high bar to the low bar, out of this release, watch her hands. She goes to grab the bar and that right hand completely slips off. And only because she is crazy strong is she able to keep that going. So we are underway here at the U.S. Classic in Hoffman Estates at the Sears Center. Rotation one is done, and we'll get a chance to see that young lady in rotation two, Reagan Smith. The genius con gymnasts continue to warm up on their one touch for the second rotation here at the U.S. Classic in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. And you know, over the last year, the final five, the gold medalists from Rio have experienced a lot of cool things, award shows, dancing with the stars. And for Simone Biles, the latest was getting her wisdom teeth taken out. And this might be the best of all of them.
This this might be one of those home videos that you just you <laughs> wish you hadn't let leak out, but kudos to her for uh, being a little self-deprecating there. That was pretty funny. You know, after the Olympic year, Tim and Nasi, it seems like the question is, all right, who's next? Who's going to be the next Simone Biles? Who's going to be the next Gabby Douglas? Who's going to be the next leader of this team? Well, the next Simone Biles could very well be Simone Biles because if there's an athlete that has the ability to come back and not just be in the game, but dominate once again. It is Simone Biles. A kid like Reagan Smith, certainly she has the potential as we look at her right there, but she is not there yet. She needs to earn that spot. You know, I think obviously at the top of the show, I mentioned Morgan Hurd. I think she has some great potential. Riley as well, you know, she did have some struggles earlier on in the season, but it was her first time competing out here in front of a big crowd on the podium. And so hopefully now she'll have a little bit more confidence as we get on later in the season towards the World Championships. C certainly big shoes to fill in USA Gymnastics, but they always seem to have somebody to come next up. Will she be the new face of gymnastics? Only time will tell, and we will start the second rotation when we return. One rotation is complete here at the 2017 U.S. Classic, and they finally crunched the numbers. And uh, Alonia Shenikova has got an early lead. She put a 14.35 up on vault, followed by Deanne Souza. Now, a lot of these athletes tonight are not doing the all-around. This isn't the end-all, be-all for these athletes this summer. They're getting ready for the national championship, so they need to do what's going to help them get ready the best. And we are looking at Lainey Matson, 16 years old. And this is a pretty interesting story. You hear a lot about cheer, uh, gymnasts going on to cheerleading, but rarely do you ever hear about a cheerleader going on to be a gymnast. And that's exactly what Lainey Matson did. And not only did she do that, but it's only been three years since she started gymnastics. And here she is, already an elite gymnast at the U.S. Classic. So we don't really see that vault too often anymore, but it's still very difficult. She does basically a round off onto the board and a full on and a back pike off. Very complicated. Here's that full twist. Kind of doesn't get it all the way around, but not going to bring in the biggest score. They're looking for more of a turn onto the table for that vault. Trains at Jim Max, where Kyla Ross, part of the 2012 Olympic gold medal team. It's a good job for Lainey Matson, And now we're looking at Sydney Johnson Sharp, and she comes from a legacy of gymnast Tim and her mom, uh, 88 Olympian Brandy Johnson Sharp. Yeah, absolutely, and was a vault finalist in those games, 10th in the all round. At the next World Championships in 89, she won a silver. But her daughter is actually 13.25 for Lainey Matson. But Sydney is actually not feeling good at all. I went up to her prior to the competition. I said, how you doing? And she just, she almost started to cry. She is not feeling well at all. Had bronchitis, turned into pneumonia was feeling a little better, got on the plane, traveled to Chicago, got off, and said she could not breathe. Only doing a full twisting, laid out Yurchenko. Nicely done, but a low maximum score. The plan is at this point to petition to a spot at the PNG Championships. Was it important that she did that vault here, though, as part of that process? I, I think so. I believe, and there you see her mom and coach, Brandy Johnson Sharp, who we mentioned such a tremendous athlete. Well, and part of that petitioning process is you do have to show up here at the U.S. Classic and at least do one event to show that you could be ready in the next few weeks to compete at the national championships. Is capable of doing a more difficult, much more difficult vault than that. But I'll tell you, she does not feel well. I'll tell you. Not a fun thing to do, compete gymnastics when you're, when you're not feeling well, especially when you're spinning around upside down, as we see her 13.2. So low in deductions, but you mentioned a low start value, so, so not a huge score. 
Visit TeamUSA.org and sign up to follow your favorite Team USA athletes. TeamUSA.org. Our second chance to see junior Sunisa Lee. Outstanding bar routine, a few, few minor breaks, but quickly over to a balance beam. Another event, Nastia, where, where she's pretty good. Not just pretty good, but very good. And, and, you know, just like on the uneven bars, she just has such beautiful lines. And this is another event where we'll see that. I had the chance to talk to her, Coach Jess Graba, before the competition. And uh, ob obviously big smile on his face talking about this young lady. And unfortunately, she's battled uh, some shoulder injuries, which she finally got back from. And then did a very simple skill on the floor and, and rolled her ankle. So she's being a little bit cautious here, but I suspect we'll be ready to go when she gets to the PNG Championships later this summer. Of course, at the PNG, she will not be competing alongside the seniors. She is actually competing against just the juniors. And that's Allie Lim, one of the head coaches there at Midwest Gymnastics, actually the wife of Jess Graba. The juniors competed in the session prior to this. They'll take the scores from tonight, combine them with the junior session, and that will crown the champions there. The juniors in the program right now are so strong that I wouldn't be surprised if one of the juniors ended up having one of the highest all-around scores with the seniors. Very popular skill. A lot of bonus points for that. It's called a wolf turn. right here great combination just beautiful two back handsprings to a stretched laid out salto little bobble there i was just about to say you know she really does have a lot of confidence she has difficult skills but also has a lot of assurance really tremendous wow. combo right there wow three acrobatic elements in a row Beautiful side aerial right into two back layout step outs. Supposed to arch back and release her head on both of those elements. Didn't quite do so. Might be a sign of nerves. This moment right here. Kind of missed her foot a little bit on that punch, but able to deal with that quite well. So Sunisa Lee's night is done. Got, got in there and did her two routines very quickly and did them well. When we return, Reagan Smith will be chalking up for her 2017 U.S. Classic debut on the uneven bars in the second half of Rotation 2. at the U.S. Classic halfway through the second rotation as we look at Reagan Smith getting ready to go on the uneven bars. Yeah. Getting that focus on as you see Kim Zameskel. You can see the height you're talking about, Tim. Re Reagan and Kim about the same height. We will see her in a moment. Before we do that, though, we're going to see Alonia Shenikova. She was actually the leader after the first rotation. And she's going into her best event by far, the uneven bars. Her sister was also a national team member, Polina. Her dad, who's also her coach as well as her mom, but he at one time was one of the coaches at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, the assistant coach there, decided when his daughters were doing so much better in gymnastics that he couldn't keep that job, moved to a gym club called 5280 in Denver. Colorado to train his young ladies along with a number of other kids as well. That is dad right there. Great combination right off the top. Transition, gorgeous, and right back up. Love that combination. So difficult. She came to play, I'll tell you. 
Little bit low on that landing, had to do somewhat of a deep squat, but that was a tremendous exercise. And it seems like if you want to be a part of Team USA and maybe get to a world or even an Olympics, if you had to pick one event to be great at, it seems like bars is that event. Well, yeah, it really has. And just even looking out at the training and the competition this whole weekend, USA's weakest event used to really be the uneven bars, but in the recent days, weeks, months, this year, they have really improved. Look at all of this right here. Transitions, and this is the coolest part. Right into a stalder. Shaposh with a half, wow. And I mean, that was a great routine at the very end. Maybe just lacked a little endurance, a little power. Has good technique, piked down a little bit on that landing as well. Have some deductions on that dismount, but that was a great routine. Quickly over to balance beam and another look at Riley McCusker. And Tim, you alluded to it. Kind of an up and down year for Riley McCusker. Most notably at the American Cup, she had a lot of struggles. Yes, she did. We're going to look at one of those right here. Kind of a scary, a scary wipeout, but she uh, obviously bounced back. You mentioned the Jessolo Trophy competition in Italy where she won the all around, but that was after this happened. On her dismount right here, watch her foot right there, misses it. Oof. I saw that live and it was one of the scariest things I've ever witnessed. See that foot, it just does not get down on the beam, misses a complete leg and somehow comes out of that and was able to finish the competition and then, as we said, recover and just a short time la later, win a major international championships in the all around. Difficult wolf turn. Three times around. She'll do another one right here. Only twice around. A little bit of a check right there. Now the element that she's going to do here, she's going to water down in training. This is a back handspring to two layouts. She crashed big time when she missed her second foot on the first layout. They've decided to play a little bit safer. They're just a little shaky on every skill, not quite having that confidence, but as we mentioned earlier, she is just now coming back for multiple injuries and for her to just be out here in front of the judges being able to compete again, this is very important for her. But she is just gorgeous. <laughs> Every skill that she does, beautiful technique, beautiful lines. And here's that dismount. So just looking to get two feet down both extremely well. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. Looks like she had it. Wow. And there was nothing wrong with this at all. You know, maybe a flash went through her head about, you know, bad times in the past. Great bounce and just holds on to that tuck too long. Hips are way in back of her heels. And if you're landing, rotating backwards with your hips in back of your heels, then you are going to sit down as she did. Unfortunate for Riley, but Reagan Smith getting ready to go on even bars. Won the American Cup earlier this year. Probably the biggest win of her young career. And I'll tell you what, she has really done a tremendous job on the uneven bars. So much more difficult. You see these skills, these inside stalter skills, those are basically new for her. A lot of releases. She has a new connection coming up right here, down to the low bar. A little bit of a leg separation, but great connection. Just so much more difficult than she was doing last year, though. Beautiful dismount in the air. Just a couple of little slides on the landing. But, you know, a lot of people said she's weak on bars in the past. But this routine right here has the potential to get a big score. She certainly has errors that she's going to need to clean up. But really a, a tremendous uh, foot forward in, in the difficulty department. 
And you see these are those in bar. Her feet are a little bit flexed on each one, but that is very difficult to get your feet and legs all the way through the bar and right back up to handstand. And this is a beautiful transition right here. Nice stalder into a reverse hect and connects it all the way down to the low bar. One of my favorite skills in gymnastics. Love that pack salto. <laughs> But these are where, this is the competition where she can really try those new skills before the national championships. Great dismount. Maybe you know, she's, back on that she's one. only doing a couple events. She'll do beam tonight as well. But she told us that she's absolutely prepared to do all four events. But it's just not in the plan in preparation for the PNG championships and then the world championships in Montreal in October. We talked about how she is a veteran. She's only 16, actually turned 17 in 10 days, and she thought, man, that's old, age 17. It was funny to hear her say that, as we see <laughs> Riley McCusker score a 13.0, so they nailed her on that dismount. But, you know, she is young at the moment, but in three years, she's going to be 20, and you don't see a lot of Olympians with the teen at the end of their age. Could this be a, one of those situations where it's going to be a tough thing to hold on? Well, a lot of kids in, at, at this point, they say that they haven't made the decision. They're going to take it year by year. I asked her, and she said, no, I am going for 2020. I'll be 20 in 2020, 2020 and that sounds good to <laughs> That's me. That's a lot of 20s. 14.55 for Reagan Smith. As we see Abby Walker, we saw her start out on the vault rotation. Here she goes on bars. Oh, boy. Wow, what a save. You know, you're going for those handstands. You gotta go for them, but it's risky. Look at how far that is. That is a ride. I was I had to see this up close. I went down on the floor, watched her do that transition, that pack salto from high to low. I said to Kim, man, that is a long way. She said, no kidding. Every handstand since that first has just been a little short, perhaps just playing it a little bit safe. <laughs> Co-head coach Chris Burdett there in the background, Kim Zemeskel's husband. So as I said, you've got to go for these handstands. You've got to try to get right up there. And she really goes for this first one right here. Is a little over, huge arch in the back, but that is a well-trained young lady to be able to not fall over. And she goes, just look how far this, as you, as you said, Tim, look how far it is for her to go from the low bar all the way up to the high bar. A nice dismount. She's just... I'm sure glad to be done with this one. This was a tiring exercise after that struggle in the beginning. That's a three-tenth step. If you're stepping on the women's side, bigger than one meter, it's a three-tenth step, smaller, one-tenth. Nonetheless, Abigail Walker, two for two so far in this competition. And now we finally get to see the young lady you talked about, Nastia Morgan Heard. And when watching her, you just can't help but smile. And for many of us, we first saw her at your meet, the Nastia Lucan Cup back in 2014 in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I think she, she made a mark on us then. And here she is. It's fun to see her becoming a senior. She really did. And I remember interviewing her after the competition. And all she could do was just smile and giggle and say how excited she was. And uh, it's, it's definitely great to see her out here competing. And, and not just competing, but as we said earlier, she really does have a strong chance to make that world team this year. And if she continues on this path to make the Olympics in three years in Tokyo 2020. Well, yes. and I'm going to put Tim on the spot because he said she's got a chance to make the world team and maybe win a world all around medal. No, it's possible. There's no question. I mean, she's another one of those kids that the rest of the world sees on video and goes, oh, my God, here we go again. Here's I mean, another one. <laughs> she is she is the real deal. She's got power. She's got tremendous understanding of her body. Just great strength, beautiful understanding of gymnastics, and just a great look as well. Born in China, adopted. Watch this right here. Back with the full. Oh, no. And that hand down, that is a large deduction. That was a brand new skill for her. She did that perfectly so many times in training. Another big test right here. 
Nicely done. She might have been a little bit under-rotated on that back with a fall, but really, I think what it came down to is she just kind of was careful. And if you're careful on beam, usually you come off the beam. But something that sets her apart, in my opinion, she's her artistry is, is wonderful, but she's so aggressive, mm. too, with every single step, every, every finishing position, as you saw right there. The dismount left. Beautiful double pike. Great landing. Ha has dealt with adversity and, you know, maybe not being as consistent. So super hard. Backflip with a full twist. And let's look at her chest. Is it a little bit too far down? Yeah, not quite enough rotation, but... Uh, I'll tell you what, if that was in practice, my guess, that hand does not go down. Just kind of doubted herself. Didn't really need to do it, but. But even with that pretty big mistake, just, just watch her right here. Every single movement that she does has a purpose to it. There. G gorgeous. <laughs> just beautiful. Really, really powerful dismount. A round off into a double pike. Look at, she explodes off that beam. Has a great landing position, just the smallest little hop backwards. So she's been a junior until now, and now she's all grown up. Can I say that about Morgan Hurd? She's all grown up? <laughs> Not quite, but. Abby Walker at 12.4. Yeah, even bars. Abby Walker's got a lot of great gymnastics ahead of her, despite that low score as we see Morgan getting a quick drink. I have a feeling if. Uh, China can get her back. They would they would take her back in a second. <laughs> this is would. gonna be a fun gymnast to watch in the years to come. Absolutely. I actually joked around with her a little bit because she's extremely powerful and the Chinese historically have been great on bars and beam, but they have struggled to have tumblers and vaulters and she is tremendous there. I said they probably as you said, they want her back. So a thirteen point six five, she gets a yellow for those deductions. And Adeline Kinlan gets ready to mount the bounce beam. Beautiful combination. this gorgeous on all of these combinations the acrobatic ones they want to see no hesitation whatsoever from one skill to the next young lady calm confident this is not an easy routine by any measure just jam-packed and can have the quality as well oh wow give it up judges that was beautiful just a junior this year but Definitely a promising future ahead. These juniors are fun to watch. We are at halftime of the 2017 U.S. Classic. And the man is not a myth, but he is a legend. Valeri Lukin will be joining us in the booth when we come back. So after two rotations, Alonia Shenikova holds a slim lead. When I say slim lead, it's not really that slim. Almost two points over the second place gymnast, Deanne Souza. 
Um, a dominant performance so far for her, but this is my favorite part, favorite part of the competition because we've done this in the past and it's always fun for me because I get to bring one of my idols in the sport of gymnastics, Valeri Lukin, into the booth. And Valeri, you take over the, the women's program coordinator job and you've been involved with the program for a long time, so I suspect this transition wasn't real difficult, but the U.S. program has been so dominant for so long. Can you highlight a couple of reasons why? Why have they been so good and so much better than the rest of the world? Well, obviously, we have a tremendous coaching staff and the national team staff. This is where we excel, you know. Um, and of course, you know, our, you know, the program that's been built up for so many years, the consistency level at the very highest right now. So this is where we really, really succeed. And so when you look out here right now today at these new these new crop of juniors and seniors, what are you most proud of when you look out there and see? Well, Nasty, I have to tell you, the most proud I am of my uh, junior side, actually, because this is our future in the country. If we're going to have solid junior gymnastics, we're always going to have a strong senior team. And if you look around right now in this gym, Actually, there is not too many very familiar faces on the coaching side either. We have a lot of young coaches, and they are on the top of the leaderboard. They're gymnasts. So this is very, very exciting to see. So, Valeri, why don't you tell us what you're looking for to get accomplished here at, at the Classic, and so far, how are they doing? Well, uh, our leaders at this time, little uh, bang up, you know, they little hurt. So this is just a step of the preparation for the world championships, obviously. We do have a, uh, national championships coming up. So uh, for some of them, this is just another start. For some of them, just to come over here and get ready for the championships. And so far, I'm very happy what I see. Do you see a leader in this group? As I <laughs> and, and is that necessary? Not this time. Not at this time. Not yep. at this time. We're not looking for the leader at this time. But so what are you looking for when you look towards Tokyo? Obviously, we have some juniors that aren't even seniors yet, which is very exciting because we have a few competing here today. Obviously, you can see the level of gymnastics right now. This is very exciting to see how juniors actually compete in this senior session. You can see that those beams and bars, those are amazing, you know. I'm very happy where, where we're at right now. But my biggest goal, of course, keep them safe. Mm -hmm. Well, well, Valeri, uh, I lobbied for him to take over the men's program, but it, it didn't work. But I guess the second best would be the women's program. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck, not just this year, but at the road ahead as we head to Tokyo. And uh, thank you again for joining us. We are going to have a lot more gymnastics. We are going to have the start of rotation three when we come back to the Sears Center here in Hoffman Estates in the 2017 U.S. Classic. So the one-touch warm-up is over for rotation number three as we get going here on the second half of this competition. And we are going to get another chance to see Riley McCusker. She had a little bit of trouble on the balance beam, but she is not doing the all-around. But you know, one young lady who is is Alonia Shenikova. We talked about her very confident lead there at 28.85. She's going to be a tough one to catch. We will see her in a little bit. Riley McCusker getting ready to go on floor exercise. How good is she here? Well, she's good. You know, obviously, it's not her strongest event. She really shines on uneven bars and balance beam. That's where she has her most potential. But she comes from the same gym as Lori Hernandez. And so she can dance as well. It's a different style than Lori. But it's certainly, it's classical, but it's sassy. Did you just say classical but sassy, Tim? I never thought I'd actually hear you say those I, words in yeah, combination. I don't know. I think that pretty accurately describes it. I agree with you, Tim. And, you know, we're not going to see the highest level of difficulty here because, as we keep saying, she was injured. She's coming back from that injury, really looking ahead towards the national championships and hopefully the world championships later. Yeah, remember, she was in a cast on her wrist and also on crutches for an ankle at the same time just a short while ago.
her full level of difficulty lacking a little power endurance, but she still remains one of my favorites for not only this year, but the next three years ahead towards Tokyo. Her coach, Maggie Hanley. So it was a great mount, and then she got a little bit off. She is way under rotated on this double twist, doesn't get the twist around, somehow finds the floor on that front flip. And here's that final pass. Two flips in the air in a tech position. I call that a stick. That was impressive <laughs> to me because she is not in great routine shape and Looking at her in the corner, I thought, wow, this is going to be a little bit scary doing a double back in her fourth tumbling run, but she dealt with it well. Sportsmanship on the sidelines at a high level. Good to see that as our leader, Alonia Shenikova, gets ready to go on the always daunting balance beam. You're really not the leader until you've done beam, I feel like. That's the real test. Well, especially when you're in the lead. <laughs> and I don't know if she knows that or not, but... Yeah. Yeah, that's always a little added pressure. Another one of those wolf turns. Three times around, you're not allowed anymore to do it with an extra half turn. You used to be able to do a two and a half. It has to be revolution two or three A little off on that but beautiful combination really has to kind of grit that around that second layout though Nice. It's called a Nanoni, named after a tremendous Hungarian gymnast. From around the time your dad was competing, Nastia. Well, she sure does have a lot of skills in this routine. One thing after another. This mount. That is disappointing without question. Oh. So the pressure of being in first place may have crept up on her. We'll have to keep an eye on Deanne Souza, who's in second place, see if she can close that gap. Dad Alex there trying to comfort her. But so here we go. Once again, Wolf turns. She'll go three times around. Nicely done. Lots of bonus points here, so she adds one going twice around. We see a lot of gymnasts doing that, but to me, that looks really, really hard. And this is also really hard. Three skills in a row. You saw her standing foot was a little bit off, but she saved it. But the dismount, you know, she's not known as being a power gymnast, and she really doesn't get a great bounce. Really talks so hard. And once again, you see those hips. If you are flipping backwards, and your hips are behind your heels, that is inevitable right there. You're gonna sit down a full point off. So the judges will be sharpening their pencils on Alonia's beam routine, unfortunately. But we're gonna go quickly over to uneven bars. We saw Abby Paulson on floor exercise, the first rotation. Now we're gonna see our uneven bars. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little personal here because she goes to my old gym, Twin City Twisters, and her dad was actually teammates with me on the 1996 Olympic team, but he was a wrestler. He won a silver medal. He's in the blue right there. Brandon Paulson. I'll tell you what, she's got good genes for being, being one tough character and absolutely they are workers. I remember watching him wrestle in that gold medal match of sitting in the Olympic Village and turn the TV on. I'm like, there's a Minnesota kid <laughs> going for gold. It was a lot of fun. And they are here today. Currently, as it says, fifth there. Yep. I think it actually might be sixth, though. Yep. There's a lot of moving parts here. People doing all around, not doing all around. No, that's actually correct because I had Riley McCusker ahead of her, and 
she is done at this point, will not do her fourth event, the vault. move so far. Dismount double front. Over rotated that, held on to her knees a little too long, but better that way than under rotating. So Abby Paulson finishes her third rotation. Shanikova, meanwhile, a very disappointing, a 12.85 for the leader. Riley McCusker, meanwhile, on the floor exercise. And there she is right there on the left, and she scored a 13.3. So a little bit better, but they did hit her almost two points in deductions for Riley, and, and you guys mentioned it, a lot of those little things that I'm sure she will uh, be cleaning up as she gets ready for the PNG, PNG Championships here in a couple weeks. And now our second chance to see one of the favorites, Morgan Hurd. We saw her on balance beam. And now our chance on fork exercise. And she's not planning to do the full level of difficulty that she can, but when she does, she has one of the most difficult floor routines in the entire world. And she actually has a training video that she has sent out on Instagram on floor and uh, it's like, hold on, <laughs> amazing. Does a double twisting double in the laid out position. It's done on what's called a rod floor. So it's a little bouncier, but I'll tell you, she has got tremendous air awareness and really super power. Imagine seeing her and Simone in the same floor lineup. <laughs> Wouldn't be bad. Remember, though, she is coming back from a struggle on balance beam where she put her hand down on a back with a full. Whole different vibe, though, doing floor versus beam, right? Absolutely all power here. So watch the first tumbling pass. The double twisting double somersault. One of the most difficult runs being done in the world. Love this young lady, wow. What's not to love? She is gonna be a good one to watch. Certainly will be bringing home some hardware for Team USA, I'd be surprised. And, and when Valeria was up here, he said, he quoted, quoted him saying, I have my money on her. And I think anytime he says that about anybody, I think that's a very good sign. Reagan Smith just doing two events tonight, but this is one of her best, the balance beam. And if she were to have made that Olympic team in 2016, this is where she would have really solidified her spot. Not doing the same dismount that she's capable of, but just a jam-packed routine. She also does that 
back with a full. That we saw from Morgan Hurd right here. Oh, actually, I lied. That was gorgeous, though. Flip up layout. Here it is right here, the back with a full. So complicated and so great. few new skills and these two are actually one of those. <laughs> we'll be seeing that a lot more often. They've raised the value of that skill. But so confident, mm. you know, it really. She always has been too. Really has and as you said, wow. Kim. Wow. <laughs> Not as difficult as a, of a dismount, but that dismount right there, I, I didn't really see much of a deduction. Uh, I hope they didn't take anything because there was nothing to take. That was a tremendous job. Boy, that first tumbling run, the flip-flop layout, she was sky high, then the back with a fall, and to cap it off, that dismount, oh, golly. Look at this, she does a flip-flop, and you know, a lot of people are trying this, but she really bounces the beam. Just gets up in the air, nice position throughout. And that was hard, but this this skill coming up right here, so difficult and just perfect. And I'll tell you what, you want to do hard stuff, but you want to make it look easy and beautiful, and that is quintessential gymnastics. Fly high, stick the landing. Gymnastics 101, baby. I was waiting for Classic it. Classic Tim waiting Daggett for right it. there. So Reagan Smith's night is done. She finishes on a very high note. Had a very nice bar routine, a 14.55 over there, and this one will probably be right up there in the high 14s as well. Morgan Hurd, meanwhile, on the floor exercise, a 13.85. So kind of middling reductions there, 1.55 off. And uh, I think that max score, Nasty, you talked about, can go up as she heads through the rest of the year. Oh, quite a lot, too, not just a little bit. Reagan Smith, it's all high fives on the sideline. <laughs> we'll see if the judges uh, gave that routine a high five. I'll tell you what, they ought to. Reagan Smith is done for the evening. There it is, 15.35, a rare green triangle for that routine, less than a point off. Huge 16.2 start value. Yeah, and that, remember, if that routine was done in Rio, that would be a 15.85, a ginormous number. And not necessarily ginormous, but a big time <laughs> gymnast, Abigail Walker, gets ready to go. We've seen her twice this evening. Has had some minor mistakes, sits in the 10th place in all around as she heads into balance beam. Oh boy, oh, she was a little bit up there. Another shades of Kim Zemeskala right there. Yeah, and, and a little bit of Christy Phillips, and Christy Phillips is on the floor judging somewhere. I don't know if she's here on beam. Yeah, she is actually. Oh boy. bit of a balance check there when you land and you bend forward like that. The judges pen to paper. No. A little bit skewed off to the side. That second back handspring very crooked. 
course, Kim Zameskel. Not as much difficulty or confidence as we just saw from Reagan, but definitely some promising talent right here and just a gorgeous mount. I don't know if it's because she's so tiny she uses a springboard <laughs> or, or what, but. Oh. Yeah, that's a Kim Zameskel pose, that first one. And so here we go. Nice combination, layout, step out, but you see those steps and then the adjustments. In the dismount, she does two back handsprings in a row into a double twist. So this is what makes it difficult. Those two elements into this, not as difficult of a dismount. That double twist is a little bit on the easier side. You know, Nasia Valeri uh, beamed when he talked about the juniors in this competition, and she's a very young senior. But how much, and you alluded to it during that routine, how much does confidence make such a big difference for these first year seniors or those juniors coming up and competing on the floor with the seniors? Well, I think that's why it's so great that some of these juniors are able to compete with the seniors because it really is a lot about confidence. Obviously, they're going to you know, have dip more difficult skills and routines, but confidence is built from experience. And the more times you can come out here and compete on a podium in an arena like this filled with people, it's only going to help you. Walker waited for her score. And this is Deanne Souza, an opportunity just knocked when Alonia Shanikova made that big mistake on her Beamer team because Deanne Souza is sitting in second place. And she's got a lot of ground to make up, almost two points as we talked about. But she puts together a clean routine, and she is going to give that all-around title a run. One of four that are competing for Texas Dreams. And Deanne has been in this competition five times, actually. One as a hopes, four as a junior, her first time as a senior. And there's Abby Walker score, 13.1. So not a great score, a few little things to clean up as we head into the, the late summer in the national championships. And here we go with Deanne Sosa. toes capable of showing great rhythm look at the positions in the air just gorgeous knees body line you know Nastia you talked about uh, gaining experience and what that does for your confidence. But I'll tell you what, there are some kids that just can never be as calm as this on beam their entire careers. <laughs> to a certain extent, you just, you, you have to have that quality, that skill that she dropped her leg and then spun around. That's called an illusion, very, very difficult. Nice gymnast and did her best to keep herself in the race, and I, I think she did. Shanna Kova got a 12.85, so anything above that will close the gap. Look at the body position. Look at the knees, the toes, right on that, all the way until her feet go down on the beam. Gorgeous. And she was just so solid there, but right here on this turn combination, beautiful first one. As Tim said, that's an illusion and was just a little off, but. Saved it. Nice dismount done in combination. Two skills in a row. Backhand spring, step out to backhand spring. She'll try to jump as high as she can right here. Look at the toes. Once again, perfectly pointed in the air. Doesn't quite have the power to land with her chest up, but overall a very strong routine. We'll find out how much Deanne Souza closed that gap when we return. We just finished what we like to call the business segment seven. 
Segment eight, and then rotation four coming up. In less than three weeks, we'll have the 2017 PNG National Gymnastics Championships, and we will be all over them. The men's day one competition will be live on the Olympic Channel, and then two days of NBC Sports Network coverage, women's day one, men's day two, and then it culminates with NBC live coverage of the women's all-around finals on August 20th. Gonna be a lot of fun, some great gymnastics. So Alonia Shenikova holds on to the lead. It's down to one point, though over Deanne Souza. There is Shenikova. She will be getting ready for the floor exercise, her final event. Can she do it? Can she, can she hold off Deanne Souza? The pressure will be on her. And our first look at the other Olympic alternate competing in tonight's competition, Ashton Locklear. She will be on the balance beam, not doing her best event at the bars this evening because of a sore shoulder, but she'll be ready to go. So things were a little murky early on, but they're starting to become a little bit more clear. Alonia Shenikova has a one-point lead. She'll be going to the floor exercise where she, where she will try to close this out and win the 2017 U.S. Classic. You know, it's, it doesn't lead you to something big necessarily directly, but to have that title has got to be still pretty nice, Nesty. Oh, absolutely, and confidence-wise, going into a national championships, of course, everybody not only wants to make the national team, but you do want to become a national champion, so this is definitely a great stepping stone to that. I don't know, Tim, I think that, that pretty much does it. <laughs> yeah, well, everybody else is gonna be chasing her. They've been chasing her all day, and I don't know if they're, it's gonna be possible for anybody to catch them, but. And let's remind you, too, she also had a fall on yes. the balance beam, so she lost a point there and is still up by an entire point ahead of everybody else. Yeah, she, uh, she doesn't look like she just won the all-around at the U.S. <laughs> Classic. She uh, obviously knows that there's a lot of routines yet to come and really a lot of gymnastics yet to come in 2017. This is just one step towards, I'm sure, a lot bigger goals. Well, that was a classical Russian piece, wasn't it? Didn't it, it, was? didn't it just, yeah. I'm not sure that the music was actually Russian, but certainly had that vibe. It had that vibe, yes. Hey, hey. <laughs> So the gym is sitting in third place after three rotations is Emily Gaskins. Our first chance to see her tonight. She is 1.4 behind the leaders. A tough event on even bars to catch. Will make up that amount of points against what I'm sure Alonio will get on floor, but a nice night for her nonetheless. She actually started at Cincinnati Gymnastics, was there for a long time. Got homesick, went to Florida. Trained last year with Steve Nuno, Shannon Miller's coach has made the transition back up to Cincinnati and doing a very nice job. Nice release right there.
Good double layout, small hop back. Solid routine. Emily finished seventh all around at this event last year with that bar routine most certainly will finish higher than a year ago. Had a very rough national championships though. Ended up 20th in the all around. There's Mary Lee Tracy. Let's go, Jay, you got it. Mary Lee, of course, coach of many great gymnasts. Amanda Borden, one of her big names. Part of the fabulous 1996 Olympic gold medal winning team. I think they were magnificent, Tim. They were magnificent, <laughs> along with J.C. Phelps as well. So Shanikova score, 13.25. Not a huge score, but when you have a lead of one point, you're putting a lot of pressure on young Deanne Souza to put up something well over a 14 to catch her. And you know, this is, again, this is just the U.S. Classic, of course, an important competition, but it is all part of the plan. They are not gearing up to do the best job that they can here, but they will be trying to peak a little bit more at the national championships in a few weeks and later on again for the world championships. They'll actually, after the national championships, regroup again at the ranch in Houston where there'll be a final training camp and selection camp for those worlds. As I said earlier, four athletes will represent the USA in a non-team world championships, the all-around and the event finals are what's up for grabs. Four years ago where we first saw Simone Biles step on the, the international floor and win, win a world all-around title. So we'll see if uh, another American can step up and, and, never, and do the same. And never falter after that. Never got beat. Yep, the most dominant female athlete in the world, in my opinion, without, without question. Shanikova's night is done. She's just hanging out with some of her fellow gymnasts. Everybody having a good time. Love to see it. Not sure if she realizes that the all-around title is probably hers. Hi. <laughs> Judges on bars continuing to, to slow things down a little bit here. And, and maybe early in the new Olympic cycle, yeah. you guys, the judging has changed a little bit. And it might be a, the judges got to find their stride as well. They do. They're, no question. Funny, oftentimes it seems like the coaches know what that score should be quicker, or they, or they think they do, but they've seen that routine so many times, right. they probably know exactly what that start value is. So yeah, this is taking a while. <laughs> we're, we're getting an up-close uh, look at how to take tape off your wrist as you finish a bar routine. <laughs> Gabby Perea, this is the only chance we will have to see Gabby tonight. This is the only event she's doing, and and uh, she's outstanding on this event, but how hard is it to sit around all night and wait to do your bar routine, Nastia? Well, it's it's hard enough to wait the entire night, and now when you think when you think it's finally time, now the judges seem to be taking forever. So this is again one one more of those mental games. You know, she's obviously physically prepared to do this routine, but mentally, can she kind of live up to this challenge right here? Remember, she is a junior, so not age eligible to compete at the world championships if she were in my opinion she would have a chance to be not just on the podium but could actually win so emily gaskins a 12.45 not a great score certainly not gonna catch the leader shenikova and here's Perea. And has beautiful lines and she floats from one bar to another another tricky release beautiful pack salto her coach Lee Uejo one of the greatest all-time gymnasts tremendous tumbler just Stunning every single skill that she has done. A little bit short there, right? As I said that. They weren't sure if they were going to do a dismount. And she's doing a very easy dismount. 
And you know, Tim, I was doing the quick math. You mentioned the World Championships where she could go and win a medal. She has one day off. That's crazy. She was born on January 1st, 2002. A few hours sooner, and she could have gone to this year's World Championships as we see Ashton Locklear finally get a chance to see her. Not on her best event tonight, but nonetheless, always fun to see the Olympic alternate back out on the floor. And boy, she had a long wait. Really nice wolf turn there. This is very common. This combination doing three revolutions and then following it right away. You're already down on the beam. It's kind of easy to just pop one more in there. Easier said than done, Tim. <laughs> Come on, go ahead. Coming up next. A little bit off on that skill, but so far she's showing a lot more confidence. <laughs> Would you agree, Tim, than we saw yes. well, even just last year at yeah. the Olympic trials? Mm -hmm. And remember, this isn't her best event. She really shines on the uneven bars. Was a world team member and got a silver medal on that event. Really was battling with a Woga gymnast, Madison Koshin, for that last spot, really. It was somewhat of a specialist spot. They were neck and neck throughout the entire year. Madison just edged her out. She came home with a, a gold medal in the team and a silver on bars. Oh, oh. boy. And that just, to me, that just seemed like a little bit of a silly mistake. It didn't even look like she under-rotated or didn't have enough power. Maybe she, just relaxed a little yeah, bit I too so. soon. Yeah, right. She exactly. don't look happy, I know that. <laughs> well, you can't ever be happy ending your day with a fall. Yeah. So our gymnast who is in second place coming into the final rotation, Deanne Souza, about to mount the floor exercise, and she needs a 14.251 to take the lead away from Alonia Shanikova. Not a small task. That is a big score tonight on this event. Not a lot of scores in the 14s. She can close that gap without, a que without doubt, but as you said, John, it is a big number on floor exercise for tonight. And again, the judge is making it tough, making Deanne think about it a little, <laughs> little bit. We've seen a 13.95 earlier today, and Morgan Hurd, a 13.85. There's Alonia Shenikova as she waits. I'm, I wonder if she has any idea what Deanne Souza needs. I'm guessing probably not. She doesn't have the computer screens and the, the stat crunchers that we have, but uh, here we go, Deanne Souza. Oh boy, and that... Uh, just a laid out somersault right there. That that pretty much solidifies that she is not going to catch Alonia. Another relatively basic tumbling pass. But once again, as we said all night long, this is really a stepping stone to the national championships that'll happen in less than three weeks in Anaheim, California.
was a great night for her, but again, didn't do all the difficulty that she'll hopefully be doing in a few weeks at the national championship. So now it's time to get back in the gym and get those routines ready. Not a night to take chances. That time will come later. No, absolutely. You did it. You did it. Very good. You know, it's so hard as an athlete to do that, though, especially when you're doing well. But you know, you got to think about. You got to think long term, and that's exactly what she was doing here. Obviously, capable of doing something much more difficult than this. Really, a simple back laid out somersault. It was beautiful, though. Yeah, it, it reminds nice. me of you, John, when you would do your layout and your floor routine. It looked, it looked like that. <laughs> that was my real pass, though. But ending, of course, with something a little bit more difficult, a double pike. Chest, chest a little bit too low on that landing. We'll have some deduction, but... Overall, a really, really strong night for her, though. Yeah, a lot to build on, a lot to be happy about. It looks like she is. And there is the leader, Shenikova. There are some gymnasts left to go, and I guess if, if you do the math mathematically, it's it's not impossible for someone to catch her, but it's going to be very, very difficult at this point. Come on, you got it. you got it. One of the last gymnasts who has a chance to catch her is Abby Paulson from Twin City Twisters. She is a little over two points behind, which on balance beam, it's uh, that's a tough, that's a tough row to hoe. Fifth place after the third rotation, but again, hasn't had a, a great knock your socks off type of night, but she's been solid, she's been consistent, and if she can just clean up a few of those little things along the way, it certainly could make a, make a jump at the national championships. And there it is, the end. So it's 11.95, so the all-around championship certainly not to be, but uh, nonetheless a good day for her. You know, Twin City Twisters, the gym that she comes out of, used to always be known as being an outstanding junior up to level 10 gym. One of the best in the country, really, as, as, there, as we see Brandon Paulson. Olympic silver medalist, but now in the last couple years with Maggie Nichols and now Abby Paulson, they've started to make that stride into the elite ranks and, and have done quite well. It's almost compulsory now to do that element on the balance beam. She needs a huge 15.35 to overtake Alonia, which is not possible. Great combination. Very difficult. And you know, what's probably even more important for her than to beat that score, take this title, is to finish this competition, especially on the balance beam, with a clean routine. That'll give her a lot of confidence going into the national championships. Mount right here. Two and a half twist. Another, another solid routine, but certainly not going to challenge for that top spot. And we obviously have to wait for that score, but it's uh, it's all Alonia Shenikova's meet today. And certainly something she can build on, Nasty, as she heads towards the end of the summer. Oh, absolutely. You know, again, it's not really about winning the U.S. Classic, but it is going to give you a little bit of a confidence boost going into the national championships, knowing that you can be on top of the leaderboard. And, you know, sometimes we get so focused on world championships and Olympic games, but for this young lady, if she continues to have the meets like she's been having at the PNG Championships, she'll make the national team. She'll have the opportunity to travel all over the world to compete for the United States of America, which is a pretty cool thing. Got a smile out of her. She's been smiling a lot this last rotation. 
I'm sure she knows at this point, without question. I know it didn't matter what the meet was when I was a gymnast. It could be an inner squad against the national team in their own gym, but if you come out on top, you're, you're pretty happy about it. And Abby Paulson there with her coach, Sarah Jancy. Waiting for the score. Paulson finished ninth all around with the Secret Classic last year. And so she will move up most likely in the ranking. Really, if she wants to make her way into that top grouping, has to do a little bit more difficulty virtually across the board. If she can pull that off, certainly we'd be much more competitive. Abby Paulson score of 13.5. So not going to close that gap, but nonetheless, a great night for Abby Paulson. Sarah Jancy, her coach, should be happy. And that young lady certainly is happy. Alonia Shanikova, she is your 2017 U.S. Classic all-around champion. We will wrap it up when we come back. Come on, Lainey. So Alonia Shanikova, she gets it done, 54.95, a comfortable victory over Abby Paulson, but a nice day for Abby Paulson, moves up into that second spot. And not just these seniors, but we have seen a lot of outstanding juniors in tonight's competition. This Team USA Women's Gymnastics is going to be another tough one to beat as they head into 2017 and towards the 2020 Olympic Games. But don't forget, in less than three weeks, we'll have the 2017 PNG National Gymnastics Championships men's and women's competition on all the NBC networks, the Olympic Channel, NBC Sports, and of course, NBC. So congratulations again to Alona Shenikova on your all-around title. For Tim Daggett, Nastia Lukin, and everyone on the outstanding Olympic Channel production team, I am John Roethlisberger. So long from Hoffman Estates, Illinois, and the 2017 U.S. Classic. So long, everyone.